Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. Since the release of the Withings scan watch, I've measured my blood oxygen saturation 457 times. At the same time, I've also measured my blood oxygen saturation with this dedicated SpO2 monitor. In this video, I will first compare these results, then I'll take a look at a clinical trial that Withings ran for the SpO2 sensor of the scan watch, and finally I'll put this in the context of health tracking. As always, I don't want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. For the test between the scan watch and the dedicated SpO2 monitor, I want to look at three things. First of all, are the values they measure in roughly the same range? Second, if I take four measurements in a row with the scan watch, are the results consistent? And finally, is there a correlation or association between the measurements of the scan watch and the dedicated SpO2 monitor? To make sure that I had enough data for this comparison, since the release of the scan watch, every morning and every evening, I would take four SpO2 measurements with the scan watch and also four SpO2 measurements with the dedicated SpO2 monitor. Here you can see a quick overview of those measurements. The date that I took the measurement is on the horizontal axis and the actual value is on the vertical axis, where all the red dots were measured with the scan watch and all the blue dots were measured with the dedicated pulse oximeter. And as you can see, I took measurements from somewhere around the beginning of August till the middle of October. Now, I won't go into detail, but the scan watch uses reflectance pulse oximetry, basically shining light on your skin and measuring the reflected light. The dedicated SpO2 monitor uses the more established transmittance pulse oximetry, which shines light at one side of your finger and measures what comes through on the other side. I discussed this in a bit more detail in my first video on the scan watch, but in general transmittance pulse oximetry is considered to be the more accurate of the two and is used in hospitals around the world. Now, I own three different SpO2 monitors, and based on the previous video I made about how your oxygen saturation drops while flying, I found this SpO2 monitor to be very reliable. I found that it could clearly detect small changes in oxygen saturation, even within my normal healthy range. Now, let's see how the scan watch compares to this. Let's first have a look if the values of the scan watch and that of the oximeter fall in roughly the same range. Now, I showed you this plot before with the date on the x-axis and the SpO2 value on the y-axis. What I should mention is that I slightly jitter the points here, so I slightly randomize them so you can see them and they don't perfectly overlap. But this value here is exactly 98%, 99%, 100%, and so on. Based on this plot, you can already see that there seem to be more low values for the scan watch than for the SpO2 monitor. But let's look at a different plot to visualize that better. So here we can see all the measurements of the scan watch on the left and those of the SpO2 monitor on the right with the SpO2 percentage here on the vertical axis. Again, each dot is a single measurement and I've slightly randomized them both in the vertical and horizontal direction so that they don't overlap as much. And what you can immediately see is that there's a much bigger spread in values of the scan watch than of the pulse oximeter. Over the last three years, I've measured my oxygen saturation every day and I know by experience that it's very rare for me to have an oxygen saturation below 97%, which is also what we can see here for the pulse oximeter. But the scan watch actually quite often detected an SpO2 below 97%. My interpretation of these first results here is that at least sometimes the scan watch gives a false low reading of SpO2 when in reality I have a normal SpO2 value. However, this does not have to be a major issue since I took four measurements each time I wanted to know my oxygen saturation. So let's see how consistent the results of the scan watch are. So that's actually what we can see in this plot here. So for each set of four measurements that I did, I calculated the average and I subtracted that from each of those four measurements. So if all four values would be the same, I would calculate their average, which is then also the same, and then subtracting that from all those four values would give four times the value zero, since they're exactly the same as their mean. But if there's a big difference between the measurements, there should be big positive and big negative values. And what we can generally see in this plot is that the scan watch has a larger spread than the SpO2 monitor. The SpO2 monitor has most values between minus one and one, whereas the scan watch also has some really extreme negative values, so where I detected a much too low SpO2, which is also what we saw in the previous plot. 
and it also has a much larger spread in general. Which means there's more inconsistency between the four consecutive measurements of the scan watch than the four consecutive measurements of the SpO2 monitor. Finally, we want to know is there a correlation between the values of the pulse oximeter and of the scan watch. And that's what I've plotted here. Now to take care of those outlying values that we just saw, I took the median value of each set of four measurements. And here you can see the results. Now again, I slightly randomized the points on both the vertical and horizontal axis so that they don't overlap as much. And this blue line here is the best fitting line through all the points. And if there would be a high correlation between the values of the oximeter and the scan watch, the line would be roughly diagonal. But what you can see is that it's almost horizontal, which means there's almost no correlation between the values of the oximeter and the scan watch. Now, what can we conclude from the results that I've shown you so far? First of all, there are sometimes some outlying values with the scan watch, so it's best to take multiple measurements and take the average of that. The problem is that even the median value that I show here does not show a correlation with a pulse oximeter in normal range levels. Now, I should mention that these are all high levels of oxygen saturation, and these would all be considered healthy and normal. However, does it even matter for most people if the scan watch can detect changes in the normal range of SpO2 values? Well, perhaps not. I can think of several applications of SpO2 measurements. First of all, detecting sleep apnea, where you basically stop breathing for 30 seconds or more during sleep. Second, keeping track of lung diseases and third, respiratory infections such as COVID-19. In all these cases, your oxygen saturation levels can drop to anywhere from the low 90s to even the 60s. And people with COVID-19 have reported feeling fine while their oxygen saturation levels have plummeted. Now, unfortunately, I myself haven't been able to test if the scan watch can reliably detect these low levels of oxygen saturation, since that would involve either going to a really high altitude where the air is thinner, or wearing some special breathing mask that feeds you specific levels of oxygen. Luckily, Withings tested this in a clinical trial. They studied the accuracy of the ScanWatch pulse oximeter when people had profound hypoxia. This was done by the hypoxia lab at UCSF, where 14 people were subjected to low levels of oxygen and their SpO2 was tracked using blood measurements. Now, Withings got approval, so the ScanWatch was able to detect hypoxia. Unfortunately, the detailed results were not made public, so I cannot say anything about that. Based on all these results, I would say, if you just want to occasionally check your oxygen saturation, just buy a dedicated oxygen saturation monitor like this. They're pretty cheap, like 20 to 30 bucks. It's an established technology and they're pretty reliable. It could also help you in the case of COVID-19 to keep track of your oxygen saturation. However, to detect something like sleep apnea, you need continuous measurements throughout the night. And this is where a device like the Withings Scan Watch can really help. Also, if you don't already own an SpO2 monitor like this, and you were thinking about buying a smartwatch anyway, then you could consider one with an SpO2 monitor built in. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit, and the Scan Watch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. There are of course limitations to the experiments that I did in this video. I'll put those in the description below. For now, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.